name is Anand Nagarajan. Uh, I work at Metro SME. And uh, today I'll be talking through uh, SMIS, Redfish, and Swordfish as uh, so yeah, a, a Swiss knife for you to go about with your uh, storage ecosystem. Uh, so uh, today we'll be talking about, uh, sto about these three storage management standards. And uh, we'll explore their modeling ideologies at a very, very high level. Uh, the architecture, their merits and demerits, and we'll also uh, uh, take a look at uh, some of the aspects of standardization and uh, customization and what it can bring about. So, one of the most important questions: Why we standardize at all? We all have our uh, have our organizations where uh, you have different components within the same organization. And then when you scale it up, a server, server vendor uh, picks up uh, components from different different vendors. So you end up at, with a very heterogeneous environment where you have uh, components coming in from different vendors, different components themselves. And uh, is there a standard way of talking to each of them? Uh, in all likelihood, no. Uh, almost all uh, components have their own way of uh, their own management int uh, interfaces and they have their own data exchange formats. So all this pos uh, poses a great deal of difficulty for, uh, uh, for an end user, like a storage administrator or, uh, um, or any uh, uh, DevOps user or someone like that who wants to use, use this entire uh, infrastructure in, in the same way. Uh, so traditionally, standalone systems have also been uh, also uh, have also been say uh, provide a solution only in a standalone way. So this does not uh, scale very well, especially when you have uh, controllers talking to enclosures, talking to switches, talking to whatnot. And then uh, security is always a concern. We need to have uh, we need to secure our data whenever whenever data is flowing through uh, through different components, through the through the web, and so on. So standardization helps us achieve all of this. So assume that you have uh, three vendors, vendors one, two, three, and a bunch of components from them. The user, if after standardization, the user gets a black and white view of, uh, uh, say, stuff like uh, the data model. So you know a storage controller is modeled in the exact same way, whether it is from vendor one, or vendor two, or vendor three you know the interface is, this, is going to be the same. Uh, uh, you know the transport is going to be the same once, once standardized. And you also know that uh, the data format, the way data is represented in each, each of these entities uh, is going to be the same. So uh, from an from a end user perspective, he, he gets a very clean view of uh, how the entire system is modeled. And a, it, it solves uh, some of the previous problems which we saw. So today, we'll look at uh, uh, SMA, SMIS, which is built on top of uh, uh, SIM. We'll take a look at, uh, we'll take a brief look at Redfish, and we'll take a very brief look at Swordfish. Now, we've had detailed sessions through the day for both of these, um, but then we'll, we'll take a look at it from a different perspective. Okay, now SMS came into effect sometime in the early early 2000s. So uh, it it gives you it, it gives you a bunch of uh, storage management functions and uh, to to characterize all your entities in an uh, IT environment. So you can you can manage not only the hardware components, you can also try uh, keep track of uh, their identities, uh, identity as in the software component, uh, software aspect of things. Um, you could do a whole bunch of stuff, like say uh, discovery via SLP protocol. You could uh, uh, you could enumerate all the values of given components, uh, modify their properties, and uh, even even have indications generated in case things uh, things go wrong or events generated. So it it extends the SIM model which uh, which was provided by DMTF and uh, it uses 
So the most preferred uh, data format is SIMXML. Uh, now, SML is, describes all its entities in uh, managed object format, which is uh, easy to read, uh, human readable, and it also is uh, platform ag agnostic. So uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, whether you are running on Windows or Linux, MOF remains the same. So we look at the ideology behind the, uh, which which was put forward by SMIS. So everything is a is an object. Everything is model, modeled in the uh, object oriented model. So whether it is a uh, host computer system or a storage pool or a volume or a redundancy set, all of them are objects. Uh, even associations or relationships between these these complex entities are also uh, are also modeled as classes. So all of them are derived from a uh, managed element, which is like a super abstract class, um, with each level of class providing its own uh, its own specialization. Now users can extend uh, uh, some of these classes. By uh, picking, uh, picking a, uh, uh, by picking a sim sim off, which uh, best describes their component, and extend it by uh, creating a specialized class out of it. Um, some of the operations which uh, which can be performed are you can enumerate instances of a given class, you can modify each of those, uh, you can choose to modify each of those instances. You can perform operations on it uh, in both intrinsic and extrinsic ways, and you can you can also delete those instances. So it gives you the entire. This is similar to the CRUD thing anyway. You can perform all those operations here. So in terms of architecture, this is this this is a simple representation of how a, a how an OEM storage pool would look. So a storage pool. Is like the uh, is like one of the most common uh, elements in a storage system. So you have uh, you have some storage pool which is defined by SNIA, and then you could uh, uh, you could inherit from SIM storage pool uh, add extra set of parameters which which you need based on your business need, and then arrive at the OEM storage pool. So. As with everything, it comes with its, its own set of advantages and disadvantages. So, since being around for a really long time, and a lot of work has gone in, uh, gone into SMIS as, as such. Uh, so, it's a it's a very evolved and a, a stable standard. Um, now, VMware, as I as I know. Uh, prefers all manageability of its uh, of its components uh, on on the host only through uh, through the SMIS interface. So you it, it is it is one of the preferred standards in virtualization so far. You have you have excellent client support in almost all uh, frequently used programming languages. Uh, we had a session on PyWeb this morning. Uh, which is the latest? You 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 have the S SDLM client. Uh, you have a lot of libraries uh, to talk to. The the chief advantage with SMIS is so when you when you get a, a controller computer system uh, model, it doesn't matter if it's uh, provided by vendor A or vendor B. Each of them are provided in the same way. So when when a client looks at it. A uh, client has just one view of what a controller computer system is. So all of this uh, put in makes makes the entire uh, uh, SMIS provider or the product to be really robust. And you you naturally get all the uh, security features of uh, say authentication, which which SIM provides. Now, disadvantages. Uh, now, what I showed you was a simple example. Uh, you have, you can have multiple levels of uh, inheritance and a lot of association classes. So, when you have elements like uh, MRDL storage pool, concrete storage pool, volume, redundancy set, 
disk drive and uh, controller computer set all of these have uh, relationships between them and these are all these are uh, expressed as associations so if in a large large system the number of classes and number of associations can be really overwhelming and it uh, soon your model tends to look like a web maybe that's why it's called web i don't know okay and um, the data exchange format is uh, xml on one hand xml is widely used everywhere on the other hand xml will still need parsing it's just a, a data interchange format you do not have it needs to be parsed uh, to extract each property and its value and one of the biggest uh, challenges with smis is a high high learning curve so for a client to uh, to use smis there was a certain degree of knowledge which the client needed to have of smis to even use it so that was that was a downside okay next we move on to redfish so uh, redfish came in around uh, the around 3 years back 2 to 3 years back um, it provides a it provides a it provides an open standard specification and a schema for uh, for managing modern uh, modern hardware or modern it environment now what it does is it gives you a restful interface follows the crud crud philosophy and uh, it uses https or http also as the as the transport protocol and um, json and do data for as the uh, data format um so what it does is it lets you discover a bunch of uh, it lets you advertise redfish services which can be provided by a server and stop advertising when you when you don't don't uh, provide the services anymore so those discovered discovered servers can further be queried for their resources you can get the resources which are provided by redfish and then you can modify those resources you can uh, perform actions on those resources and you can delete those resources um, it provides a uh, access to these resources can be obtained only after uh, uh, a user is authenticated and authorized to view that resource now there are certain resources like uh, like say accounts accounts is a, a good example so not everyone can can create a user account you would typically expect only an administrator to create a user account but then you could you could have a simple operator uh, to go and uh, monitor the monitor things like the storage system uh, the the status of the system as a whole so you have you have authorization also in place uh, as with as with the complex system Uh, whenever something goes wrong or whenever something happens of interest uh, you would like to be notified with with events so uh, there is a robust event uh, event eventing mechanism available and there's also a method to handle uh, long running asynchronous tasks so if you issue a long uh, long running task you can get notified notified with task progress and then be notified once the task completes So what is the ideology with redfish so it did away with a bunch of things with which uh, which we saw in smis so so it did away with inheritance it did away with polymorphism uh, and it started treating uh, treating resources as flat resources that are then contained one being embedded into another or uh, one derived from the other so so you had one you have you basically have one uh, service entry point which is redfish v1 and then all your resources are can be accessed through this now there are two major resource types one is a simple resource and then a collection of homogeneous resources which is a resource which is also called a collection resource collection now you can look you can look at a res, you can categorize a resource in three major uh, major ways a one something which looks like a box uh, which is uh, a steel box so to say so anything which is like a steel box goes into 
goes into chassis. So, uh, and anything which has, uh, which is in the data path or where you have IOS running, typically goes into the logical path uh, and is categorized under systems. And anything used to manage some of these, uh, some of these other resources falls under the uh, manager, uh, manager resource. One of the other design tenet which was used was to reduce network traffic. So it's like, imagine uh, all the people in this room, if you had to travel from district, from source to destination, and all of us took out, took out our own cars to go there. So that, that would lead to a lot of road traffic. Now this can be avoided if you bundle all of us into one, put all of us in a, in a single bus, and then send the bus from source to destination. So that's typically what was happening earlier. So each time you want a resource, if you if you keep calling for it, you you are uh, you are basically overloading the network traffic, which can be avoided if you if you leverage the horizontal scalability of HTTPS, bundle more data into uh, one single request response uh, packet, and then you can reduce network traffic. So. Long story short, we've seen a lot of this. So events go under uh, event service, event uh, subscription, delivery, all that is managed by event service. Uh, task, uh, tasks go under task service. And so you can have task monitor and uh, uh, the actual tasks which can be provided. Then you have accounts and roles which go into account service. So session service takes care of establishing a, a, a valid session for an authenticated user, uh, which can be used through the lifetime. Uh, all the management part of it goes into managers. All physical entities go under chassis, and all uh, logical entities go under systems. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of Edfish? A, uh, it provides out-of-band management through MCTP. It also provides in-band management. If you if you would like to use the host interface, you can use it through your device driver. Uh, the JSON no data format is very useful if you want to directly access the response and then access one particular attribute within it. Uh, it also helps you categorize uh, the response that you get. You can treat uh, uh, simple objects, arrays, and uh, complex uh, JSON uh, objects in a different way. So it, it makes parsing that much easier. Uh, so do, would clients have to care uh, whether they are talking in-band or out-of-band? Uh, no, the answer is no. Because as long as you are talking, you are issuing an HTTP request, uh, you don't really don't really care how the response is being uh, satisfied as long as it conforms to the data format specified. Uh, the, the data representation also adopted has been more client centric, so you don't have room for assumptions. Like say, uh, there are I see a lot of implementations earlier OEM implementation where you would say you would have a field called size, so and which would return a number. Now, it's up to the user to assume what that size means. Is it in bytes? Is it in KBs? Is it in MBs? Nobody knows. One of the things which uh, uh, which has been adopted here is a naming convention. So you have you typically have something like size in bytes or capacity in bytes. So the following number will just indicate uh, it makes for very easy client programming. So you can just take it and display it for all you know. The schema is very well defined for uh, categorizing uh, servers. Uh, it has excellent OEM extensions. Uh, uh, so if you feel that uh, the schema can be, uh, you need more detail to characterize your resource, you can do it via the OEM extension, and not just for properties, for actions as well. So the, the disadvantage with Redfish, and I ran, in, I ran into this issue very soon. Uh, I had a, uh, we have two families of controllers, one with array, one without an array. So I, I had this challenge of putting, uh, 
modeling an array in Redfish when it started off, and there was just no way of doing it. Uh, so I had to find a workaround to do it. Uh, so storage management, in its simplest form, needs needs better handling, needed better handling. And uh, Redfish as such is a is a pretty new standard. It needs uh, it needs better adoption and uh, more contribution from from a lot of folks. And then, yeah. So we needed more help with the storage storage management uh, aspect of things. So that's where Swordfish comes in. Uh, it helps provide a single view of storage, uh, be it traditional or hyperscale or hyperconverged storage. It extends the DMTF uh, specification. Uh, it leverages basically all the other services like account, event, task, whatever we saw, uh, which Redfish provides and builds on top of it. The most important thing is this. Uh, it provides, it simplifies the way uh, storage can be allocated. So we saw in, in, in the data that a uh, user does not have to know where uh, where the storage is getting allocated from, which storage pool it is getting allocated from. As long as you specify what class of storage you need, it gets allocated and the user can use it. So some of the design tenets are ideology. Extend water, leverage and extend whatever has already been invent, invented by Redfish. Uh, now SMS was a very comprehensive model. So all whatever was uh, whatever whatever is available in SMS can be can be simplified and refactored uh, into a more client centric model. So, so that's that's partially that's what we've been uh, we've we've actually achieved through class of service based uh, storage provisioning. Um, it covers block, file, and object device storage. Ah. So the same story. Uh, the, till here, it's the same that that. Okay. So till. Uh, two systems, the view, view of uh, Redfish and Swordfish is the same. Swordfish builds on storage systems and storage services, mostly storage services. So, yeah, we already saw, saw most of this. You can create, you, you can have your drives, you can create uh, storage pools out of drives, you can, have, you can allocate volumes out of storage pools, you can specify different classes of service which can be uh, confirmed to. Uh, you can characterize your uh, endpoints for devices under endpoints, and then you can do some other jazzy stuff with storage groups. Wherein, if you find uh, if you find multiple storage storage pools or storage volumes, which confirm which have uh, say similar similar uh, expectations. Let's say, for instance, you want to set. Uh, you want to enable caching on a bunch of storage volumes, not do it on the rest of them. You can categorize them as a storage group and then have a write cache enabled on just them. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? Whatever we saw, as, uh, saw in green in Redfish are also applicable here. Uh, in addition, it provides a simplified class of service based storage provisioning. Um, it can support multiple uh, multiple storage environments, um, and it it essentially gives you the gives you the entire power of SMAs in a much more simplified format. A disadvantage is it's a new for new newer standard, and uh, it needs better adoption and wider contribution to make it more powerful. So a small thing on what we've done so far, so we have a red. Redfish, Swordfish, and an SMIS uh, provider to to talk to our storage controllers in our DAS configuration. Um, we went one step ahead. We saw what can we really uh, do now that we have a Redfish implementation. What do we do with it? So we have uh, we came up with a, a OpenStack Horizon dashboard plugin, which can talk to our Redfish provider and then get information and model our storage controller. 
uh, we also could uh, talk to we uh, talk from vSphere web client plugin through our SMS provider and then manage our controllers. So that is a really gain uh, out of this. So out of whatever we've developed so far. Now you see we have a bunch of uh, uh, bunch of diverse end user applications. Uh, some of them could be GUI or a CLI or a totally different uh, uh, plugin, so to say. And then we have a bunch of different components here, which can which uh, which need to be managed or which need to be uh, interfaced with. Uh, what we have is a solid client server framework, be it in SIM. Uh, or uh, date in SMIS, or Redfish, or Swordfish. Once you have a solid client server framework which serves as your backbone, you can you can talk to multiple uh, multiple devices, multiple different de devices, provide the data in the same format, same model, and same interface to end users, end user uh, uh, client applications. Now you can. You can really cater to uh, diverse end user needs and fo focus more on important stuff in the end user client application without having to bother about uh, uh, complexities of each co each component. You, so you are totally abstracted from it. So if you do have a or if you if you do have a system that you want to model or uh, if you have an OEM system and you are wondering how to how to migrate it to a newer standard, so this can this can serve as a, a stepping stone for for things. So, first step is you you start start off by identifying different components or different entities that comprise your environment. You look at the look at their individual attributes and you look at all the all the operations that can be done on them. Uh, you look at interactions between different uh, different entities. In, in your system and uh, look at your persistent persistence needs. Once you do this, extend your components to, to cover all your business needs. Uh, then you move ahead, you choose uh, choose which standard you want to adopt because uh, the earlier you make this choice, the, the, the better it is. Uh, you choose which standard you want to do, you want to support, be it uh, SMIS or Redfish or Swordfish then you choose your web server based on your business needs and where, where the web server would probably run. Um, in case of in case of SMS, you would also have to choose your SIMOM based on different uh, uh, operating environment. Then you create your schema, which defines your defines every entity, uh, every entity. Uh, you compose different elements when when applicable, and you. Uh, provide associations to uh, related entities when when you do not categorize them as composed elements, but rather as related elements. So once you're done with all this, choose your programming language that you want, and then go ahead implement your software suite. And voila, we have a system. So I wanted to leave you guys with some food for thought. We spoke a lot of a lot about uh, standardization. Now, uh, what can it uh, what can it really result in? So, some of the things that I, I find very fascinating are um, when you have standards and when you have a standard way of doing things, you can focus more on API driven design, where you have totally different uh, stacks of products, and they have all they do is communicate uh, communicate with different APIs. So, you could have OpenStack talking to Redfish through an API. You could have OpenSDS talking to Swordfish through an API. So you, you focus more on interfaces rather than uh, worrying about interoperability. Yeah, and uh, so I find this, uh, if, if you guys have seen Iron Man, I find Jarvis to be superly cool. and. Uh, I would really like to have something like Jarvis in a in a storage environment where you have diverse you, you have components of different uh, different vendors different uh, you have heterogeneous components, but then Jarvis is able to talk to all of them in the same way. 
so that uh, so I uh, I'd like so standardization can actually bring about this this convergence in part. Now another thing which uh, which I see is Java always provides Iron Man with uh, the most important inf information. He doesn't give him uh, give uh, dump dump all the data that he has. He gives him information, not data. So that's something which we can which we can provide. Uh, imagine a scenario where you have a storage system and you have some drives failing. Now, what would the user really care about? Failure reason is secondary, if you ask me. Most important thing user will care about is what what happens of my data. What what can I do to uh, prevent a catastrophe? Right. So, most important thing for, for him is do I have compatible drives which I can use to replace that drive? That's important. Once you do that, you can actually have you can actually be not uh, you can move into automated error handling. So you know a drive is going bad. Once a drive has gone bad, how do you react to it? You find out find out any usable drives, replace it, and then rebuild your uh, storage volumes or storage pool. Which brings us to the next thought. What next? Uh, it, so. Action does not always have to be reactive. It can also be proactive. So that's something you can do via uh, self-learning. So if you see that a certain uh, certain model of drive tends to go bad after these many hours of use, uh, you could have a, a buffer before it, a threshold before it, and say, you've already used this drive for these many years. Uh, I feel your drive is going to go bad. Why don't you go and change it? And Proactively, the system could uh, identify drives that it wants to use, and then prep them for this replacement, and, and gracefully bring down the drive which has been used a lot, then replace it to the new one. So, in a way, standardization actually paves the way for innovation. So, you can focus on more important things rather than how do I make software compatible with all components. So these are uh, references for each of the each of the uh, standards I spoke about, and then done. Questions? To Jason in SMS? Not sure. That would be interesting. Yeah. So we had this, uh, we had uh, one of these scientists back at IASC who had done a, uh, who had done some research on what it takes for passing a simple instruction. A simple Java dot two string operation takes around 29 computer cycles. That's what his uh, thing was. So he had this entire paper on how you can reduce conversions between uh, one data format to another data format and uh, keep uh, keep the data conversion to a minimum. Uh, and then it automatically has a uh, improves your total efficiency. And I see it all the time. Firmware gives me data in, in a specific data format. I get it, we, we have to pass it, put it in a specific data format which can be displayed by the GUI. Instead, why not, why can't firmware really give out data in the same format which clients need? So that's something which the BMC would address, this management path would address. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you have done a prototype of using uh, OpenStack Horizon. Yes. To call Twitch. To call Redfish, yes. Redfish? Yes. So how, how difficult was that? Uh, it wasn't too difficult. Uh, short answer, it, it wasn't too difficult. We had to get ourselves more used to OpenStack. So it was more of an understanding perspective. Once that was done, most of OpenStack or uh, most of these uh, software are all restful. So uh, it, in fact, was that much easier for us. 
because Redfish had its RESTful interfaces. Now, you could use Keystone authentication, which is there in OpenStack, and then hook it up to Redfish, because Redfish is open open with respect to authentication. It doesn't really say that you need only basic authentication, right? right? So you could use Keystone authentication within Redfish also. But you didn't do that. No. <laughs> Uh, we did basic authentication though, but then all your uh, requests to model model the entire storage tree would go from uh, Horizon to uh, Redfish and then through to uh, to the uh, server, uh, get processed there and then get back the information. And we actually made made use of uh, ODATA constructs a lot to to form the tree. Because your response is just a response, right? How do you, how do you really know the type of uh, entity? How do you know uh, how you have to deal with it? So the metadata is very useful in in that regard. Okay. So with with that development, was that done as part of the OpenStack uh, project slash recipe? Uh, just done outside. No, uh, it was a it was a POC. Okay. Yeah. And so, is there any intention of Releasing that code anywhere, or is that to say? No, we could, we could, we have to, we have to evaluate that possibility. We actually wanted to open source that client, but then we really need to see if, uh, okay. see things. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, for existing uh, storage management products that are widely used, like EMC Control Center or RDM and TPC, uh -huh. which is now called Spectrum Control, how difficult is it? What were the steps involved to bring that up to the new standard? Those relied on uh, SMI guys. So if you already have a working product, you're halfway there. Because you already know your components, you know all interactions between that. So to model it within this is not going to take you any time. And that's that's where you would spend most of your time in. So the rest of the thing is easy. Web server and communication, routing routing requests is all easy. Model is what takes most time. So if you have a working working system, uh, it's a proprietary system, so to say, you already know all, all your attributes. You have to find which, uh, what makes most sense in the, so if you have size, if you have, cap, you do have capacity sources and capacity in bytes, which is already there in the standard. So take the size, convert it to uh, the, the, the uh, the units which are already present here, put it in, and it's easy. 